Hi, everybody. This is another episode of We Are M&R, and I'm super lucky today to be talking with Joey from uh, Culture Studio. So, Joey, you want to introduce yourself and talk just a little bit about your company and what you guys do? Yeah, yeah. Joe Santo, um, COO of Culture Studio, and we're a decorated merchandise company, um, strictly in the music industry, which uh, has taken a little bit of a back back seat, but um, that's kind of our bread and butter. For sure. So how did you guys get started? Now, it was it you and your brother that got started? How, how did you guys get going with this? Yeah, so there's actually uh, three of us. Um, and we were a retailer before we were a manufacturer. Um, so we would we had a boutique and we were selling in multiple stores around the world and we had our own clothing line. Um, and then we started noticing uh, some different talents that we all had. Um, you know, one brother super good in sales. Uh, I took to the equipment, one in you know process, and then um, Rich CEO with the vision, or CEO with the vision, and and the ability to grow business that I've never seen before and find new business. And um, we all kind of had these hidden talents that we didn't know and started bringing them out. And I would say that was our aha moment when we figured out that, yeah, we weren't great retailers, but we were great manufacturers. And uh, that's what got us here. Yeah, that, that's that's an interesting thing because I, I think I first was became aware of you guys because I just saw the real innovative prints that you guys were doing, right? I mean, you're doing some techniques that other people – were just avoiding at the time, whether it was water base or you guys were taking a lot more chances with your prints, if so to speak, you know, and I, I became aware of you guys from that. I don't know if you want to speak on that for a second. Yeah, yeah. When we when we were uh, looking to get our own um, products made, um, it was a struggle trying to get people to print water base or discharge. And if you remember back then, discharge smelled like rotten eggs. Um, and it was pretty, pretty tough stuff. Yeah, it was gross. Uh, so, you know, we were doing the all over prints. We were doing everything really big and trendy at that time. And finding someone to actually want to do that and get out of their, you know, 13 inch box uh, was, was tough so we that's where we took to the innovation and and we were putting you know vanilla extract inside of our discharge base and and you know doing some weird crazy stuff to to eliminate smells and and all that good stuff but yeah yeah we've always been a little different <laughs> yeah for sure no i i appreciate that believe me especially the smell part because i we've been to we've been to some factories in the beginning especially when they were they were printing and and it was funny how people would adjust to it. And it was just like, they, would, they wouldn't even notice it after a while, but then, you know, I think they would leave the factory and they'd like go to a store afterwards and everybody would just be like, oh my God, you know, <laughs> they wouldn't realize it was in their hair and everything, you know? And fortunately it has gotten better. You know, a lot of the companies have, have improved that quite a bit, um, but yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I think, uh, well, just, just to cover this, to, you know, Basically, we need to put a pin in it, so to speak. But what has the last month and a half been like for you? It's it's hit everybody a little different. But what's it been like for Culture Studio and yourself, and what you've what you've experienced? Um, it, it's been it's it's been a, a unique situation. Um, we really had to, you know, as I said, we're we're heavy in the music industry, and when everything kind of came to a halt, you know, our resilience. Uh, nature um, allowed us to look at what our options and, and what our possibilities. And we're sitting on a million units and what can we do with these a million units? And, um, you know, moving into the face mask product and then ensuring that, you know, workers have a place to stay and, and getting the team back. And, you know, I think the, the worst thing is that the media makes people scared. Um, when they don't need to be so scared, they just need to be cautious, right? You don't need to be afraid of this thing. You just have to be aware of it. And, and I think that the media scared people so much that everybody shut their door and bought toilet paper, you know, and, and it was weird. Um, so, you know, the, the struggle has been really gaining the confidence to the different business possibilities. 
I, I, I totally understand that, you know, and it, it, I think depending on who you talk to and how they've been affected and also what they've seen, you see the whole gamut. You see, see the gamut from people that are taking it extremely serious where, you know, you'll see the people in full hazmat suits at Costco yeah. versus, you know, and, and fair enough, right? I mean, especially if you have relatives and, and people that are at risk. And then you see people that are literally making jokes about it, which isn't the most appropriate thing either, but whether they're printing little toilet paper pieces and putting it through the dryer, you know? And I mean, but, you know, I think, you know, it's like, how do you survive this thing? You have to, you have to figure out your own path and, and, right. you know, do what's right for yourself and your people. And, and I've been, I was really impressed with some of the, some of the adaptations that your company's made and, and say what you will or feel the way that you want to feel about masks. Like they're mandated, you know, they're mandated for, for people. And if you own a store and I've said this in other, in other situations, but if you own a store, you're going to want to have a uniform presentation for your employees and, and right. you need that. And that's important to, to follow, not only to follow guidelines, but just also for confidence and comfort and, and of the, of the people visiting. So there's definitely a necessity there and, and there's a place for it. So I, I, I thought it was really cool to see, you know, that, uh, that you guys were, were able to do that and help people out with that, that respect. Um, yeah. So. One thing that, that we did was, you know, we're still not a hundred percent back up and running by no means, but um, we are taking the initiative to make people feel comfortable with the cleaning crews that are coming more frequently. And then um, we're bringing in, you know, two or three different departments and team members per day. And, you know, they all got like a welcome back package and it was face masks and hand sanitizers and, you know, uh, wipes and just stuff to feel comfortable. Um, and like you said, you know, whether you like the mask or not, it's something that you have to do because the person next to you might not be as comfortable as you are. And so, you know, wearing that mask, although, is your opinion of it it's just the right thing to do for now yeah i would say i would definitely agree with that and i think that you know um having it having it personalized or having it you know respectively you know branded or whatever is 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 just a good extension of what people you know do normally i mean uh, you know and i think i think that's cool um do you think in regards to hurdles or roadblocks i know you guys have had a lot of them you know every <laughs> company seems to have it, it, I don't know if this ranks as maybe the the most memorable, just because we're in it still. But uh, do do you have any that you you would speak from as far as getting started and and you know that might help other printers to talk about? Um, you know, we've had a we've had a lot of hurdles and roadblocks um, going from you know a retail store to fifty thousand square feet. Um, the growing pains haven't stopped, um, and although that's a great thing it is difficult to manage and and to get your team to buy in that things will change constantly and last year we went from a really solid operational year to a complete stop and then a whole new change and like to what people really like is that comfortable space where they can okay this is how we're doing it and this is what we do but for us it's like okay this is how we're doing it now and tomorrow or, or a month from now it's it's going to be different um so i would say our biggest hurdle um is really getting the culture and, and the team to understand and adapt to change um that's that's the most important thing. And, and if I could give anybody any kind of, you know, feedback or, or advice, um, that would be it. You know, you'll have sales hurdles, you'll have uh, print hurdles, you'll have all this stuff that, you know, happens on a daily. But if you really want to change and allow yourself to be adaptable you have to be open-minded and you have to be ready and 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 you have to embrace change and then see what how you can get out of it or, or what you can do to uh to take advantage of it yeah i would i would say your your company especially has been good at that you know as far as being adaptable and, and working with growth you know i mean because growth is a scary thing for a lot of companies growth is 
can be the biggest risk that they have in some ways is if you grow too fast, either with employees or with the work that you take on and you don't, and you don't, you know, properly plan, you can get overextended or you can get overloaded with labor or both, you know, and, and then you're, you know, you're, you're in a really bad spot. So I think that that is one of the things that, that people are dealing with now that's extremely difficult is how quickly do you bring people back versus, you know, keeping them somewhat on the sidelines. And then, uh, you know, I think that that that's a real tough one to navigate. Um, yeah, I, I think everybody has to move at their own pace, you know, just like the world right now. You can't just say, turn the key on and say, okay, the entire world's back up and running. Um, and I don't think you could do that in your business as well. You have to do with what's comfortable for your team um, and what allows your clients to rely on you. Um, you know what I mean? You you have to stand strong and, and walk that, that fine line of, of, you know, being open and being safe. Yeah, I would say one of the areas where I've noticed as far as your organization is organi organization itself, right? Without being redundant. Yeah. You, you've, you've done quite a bit to become more organized. Yeah. And, and I recognize that, you know, when we first came out there, we met you guys and we were just, you know, kind of looking around, you're showing us your shop and different things. And then you're showing us the different monitors at the different stations. Maybe you just want to speak to that. How did that develop? Like, when did you come to the realization that you had to kind of create your own system, so to speak, you know, to organize? Um, probably when I almost had a, men a mental breakdown. Uh, <laughs> uh, a lot of shops rely on one person or 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 you know a nucleus to make sure that orders are running and with us you know we are in a lot of different styles of business and and there's a lot of moving parts and we have 16 inner departments um, that all are self-sufficient you know with a lead and they all you know report to each other and blah 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 so how do you eliminate questions and how do you eliminate where things go or or what moves to what station or or where it goes next um so you know with the build with the the ability to put visuals everywhere um it allowed us to eliminate questions so you know when screens are made you know what press it's going to you know where if it gets finishing you know when it's in packing and you're able to follow this order from creation to shipping um all with visuals and all with out having to ask where is this um so that that was really a a huge step for us i think that's one of the most typical things is when you grow x amount i, th I think there's a actual you know somebody out there i'm sure knows this but that uh, when you grow a certain amount they basically say you're everything in your company breaks <laughs> so it's like every system you know and i i think it was a, a japanese uh, philosopher or japanese statistician that said that like when you when you double in size everything in your company breaks every system basically yeah. essentially ceases to function the way it's supposed to and you have to recreate each one and that's where when they reach a certain amount of business where they can't keep it in their head anymore that everything starts to break and fall apart and and they start to panic you know and and everybody has a different ability to keep a certain amount of to-do lists and work in their head and that's where you, you get to a certain point and you're just like man i gotta have something so that everybody knows what they're supposed to be doing right and they're not you know and there isn't any dead dead space so i think that was impressive to see how you guys keep all that organized and what 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 are your tips for for other printers that that might be feeling that squeeze right now it's it's hard to Advice is tough, you know, everybody has to kind of find their own way and their own mold um, and and do what what they had, you know, you don't, I don't want to say, oh, go make this and, and you'll get through business or, or go do this because you really got to fit your mold to, or your sales or your direction to the, 
to your objectives or your vision, right? Um, you know, an advice that, you know, one of the questions was like, what makes killer merch different or something like that, right? And this can kind of play in tune to like what makes us unique. And, and we create proprietary products that kind of separate us from other people being able to do the same thing. Although we're a screen printer, we might have, you know, something to print on a little bit different than you do. Um, so like having that proprietary product allows us to overcome some hurdles that, or, or some, some like, it, it gives us the ability to be unique. If that makes sense. No, it totally makes sense. And I think that that's a really, really fair response. And it's a, and believe it or not, that is the common response. You know, I ask people, when I ask other companies and different things, what are your tips or your suggestions to other printers? Most printers go, I can't really give a specific, you know, like broad stroke recommendation because every company has all these different variables that they're, you know, it depends on the niche, it depends on the labor that they have, it depends on the customer base, it depends on where their company's going, the age of the company to some degree. But I think that that is, that is the advice, is the advice has to flex with the company and the situation and everything. So I think in that sense, it's like, don't do any just like knee jerk thing that you find on Google, right? <laughs> just, oh, if you're growing as a company, here's five steps you should follow, you know? It's yeah, like, no, don't do that. <laughs> so, you know, think about what what's going to work, right? And and I think uh, that might tie into every company being a little different in social media and how they you know reach out. I think your company has really been a standout as far as how you've worked with the media. Like I think you've done a really good job, and I think that's a tricky one for for your company and companies like you, where maybe a fair amount of your work maybe is proprietary and you can't showcase it and splash it out there right. but yet you still want attention and you still want to get you know either views on social media and different things so maybe you could speak to that just briefly in regards to having proprietary a lot of work you know but still wanting to have media you know celebration and all that yeah i mean um if you think back to when we first started we were a manual machine but to the outside world, we were the biggest shop um, that's come to Chicago, right? When we first got our tour, um, we were unloading semis in the street uh, and we worked, you know, 48 hours in a day uh, to get it done. So we've always had um, this vision, this goal and, and our, our brand um, is really strong and, and, and is perfectly in line with our social media and our marketing. Um, you know, we, we tend to not show, you know, how to print or, um, you know, the machines running. Um, we're really a brand of merchandise and, and, you know, a little bit more vertical branding than uh, the typical. Exactly. I think that in regards to that, your your company slices it really well, you know, for for that sort of thing. I would be I would be kicked behind the scenes if I didn't mention that you've had an exciting new machine install. You know, I think we should mention that. You know, I think you're 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 one of the local companies that that uh, has you know recently added that, and maybe you can just speak to that briefly. You know, I mean, I I I'm more about wanting to talk about your company. But it is part of your company and it's a big step. So maybe just mention that briefly if you don't yeah, mind. Yeah, give MNR a little shout out there, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I would get in trouble if I didn't mention that at least a little, you know. Yeah. You know. Oh man, talk about bad timing slash perfect timing, right? Uh, so we install a, a digital squeegee machine when the world shuts down. Like smart guys really really smart uh, but it's it's been great because it's allowed us to you know as you know and and as everyone at MNR knows um, we uh, we like to 
really put our heads inside of things and our nose in places that they probably don't belong all the time. Um, so we've had some time to really dial this thing in. And, you know, in true Culture Studio nature, we had orders sold on it before it was installed. And, you know, so we just went nose to the to the grind here. Um, and it's been it's been really cool to see again the change, you know, the art team has to be able to adapt to this new methodology and this new technique and this new thing. Um, and, and that's, you know, that's not easy. Um, and, you know, it's been just a blast working with m &R and everybody over there. I don't know if I can mention names or not. Um, sure. Yeah, sure, not? Yeah. yeah. Michelle is just unbelievable, you know. And She's so good. It, just being able to work with her is a gift in itself. So, um, you know, it's really been, you know, as I said, bad timing because, you know, the world stopped, but great timing because we were able to do these Zoom meetings and um, really dial this thing in uh, at a pace that we, uh, that we typically don't get. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that nobody gets, right? But I think it's exciting and I, really tracked the beginning of the hybrid from, you know, when I first started m &R. And again, I don't have to get too much into that, but I, just the fact that I saw it and I went, man, if I don't have to separate for 14 colors, you know, <laughs> simulated process with all the ink that you don't have to have a wall of inks, you know, it, it it's pretty cool. So, so that, yeah, I'm excited for you guys. I can't wait to see, I know you're going to do great things with it. So I, I just I knew I would get kicked behind the scenes if I didn't uh, yeah. mention that, you know, and 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 talk about it briefly. Like, so just just I want to respect your time. I know how busy you guys are. Um, any in general like uh, messages to the industry, or how can people reach out to you? You know. Um, uh, yeah, you know I'm uh, I'm always available, and I I love talking shop. I, I you know no offense, I don't personally love doing this. Um, because no, <laughs> everybody has their own way of doing things. And, and there's, you know, there's a lot of, you know, good and bads out there. And, and I'm not someone to tell anybody how to do things. Um, but I love being a support to anybody that I possibly can. And if you do know me, um, I'll only give you the truth, you know, and I'll, I'll only be honest and, and, and I'll only try to help. Um, so, you know, I am always available to offer guidance or offer whatever questions that that anybody has you know i i'm definitely by no means the oldest here um in this in this group of printers but uh, i've seen some things i've done some things and if i can help the next guy uh hey man i'm all for it so yeah you know joey at culture um you can call me email me whatever dm me whatever you want. Uh, I'm, I'm always in to help. All right. Well, it's been great talking to you, Joey. And then um, we'll look forward to talking to you again soon and, and take care and stay safe. Okay. Cool. Yeah. You too, man. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much.